simply put, are cinematic. Forged from the Earth by molten lava, there are eight land masses in total. And on this adventure, we will be exploring on the remote island of Kauai. A literal paradise, this diverse location has been the backdrop for many movies and television series. But today, it will be the backdrop for Beyond the Tide. Oh man, this is uh, pretty epic. Check out the rain over there. It's going into the mountains. Yeah, well, as long as that stays that way, I think we're good, because where we want to head is right up here into this rock bed and start looking for marine creatures. All right, guys, our first Beyond the Tide episode in Hawaii. I'm pretty excited. Let's move. Under the light of day when the tide pulls back from the shoreline, intertidal pools can be the perfect place to find hidden marine animals. However, under the cover of darkness, these animals emerge from their hiding spots to search for food, which makes exploring the tide pools at night the perfect time to get up close and personal with some seriously bizarre creatures. <sighs> Woo! All right, well, we have made it to the shoreline, and let's go with the path of least resistance on this one and go this way. That looks like a bunch of tangles of trees, and that looks like open shoreline. All right, start moving. Wow, look at this. The overhanging leaves on the shoreline are pretty, there's a crap. Oh! There it goes. Ghost crabs. You see how fast those were? Look at the structure. This is all real soft sand, you see that? Oh yeah. And then there are these different hard rock masses. Is very it, different than anything we've explored it's before. This is not. That's very grippy. Sand is very soft. How deep is it out there? Not too deep right here. But it's warm! It's warm water! We're used to tide pooling in freezing cold water, so it's not gonna be too bad getting soaking wet tonight. And uh, I think it's just a matter of time before we find the right pools to start exploring in. All right, let's head up. To oh, there's another crab! Look at that, you see it? Where? Running along the edge there. Man, we have oh, gotta yeah. catch one of those ghost crabs. All right, let's just keep heading this direction. You get it? Got it. All right, let's go. Let's go. Wow. Okay. Oh man, they're everywhere. They are everywhere. You can see how fast they are. Here, bring the light in. They're called ghost crabs, in my opinion, because they're so fast they disappear like a ghost in the wind. And we've seen them skittering all over the sand. And I snuck up on that one and actually used the same tactic I've used with frogs, where I keep a bright light right on its eyes, it kind of keeps it stunned right there in place. And I was able to actually get my hand on it, and then it tried to pinch me, I let go, and it ran down into these rocks, and it just managed to get a hand on top of it. I had a pretty good shot. I, I saw you try to go for it, and then it ran behind you. You saw that? Yeah, yeah. It, it had like this zigzag move. It was like, and went right around me. But there you have it, our first marine creature of the night, a ghost crab. It's interesting, he's got his eyes tucked in right now, but these eye stalks are rather pretty. Let me see if I can get him to put your eyes up. Watch this. Oh, Look wow. At, see that? Now, I don't know how good their eyesight is, but they can sense light and movement, certainly, and it appears that too much light forces it to just stay in one spot. Wow. My hand's actually kind of shaking. That was a tough catch. What a cool crab. Right? What big eyes you have. Yes, Mr. Crab. What large eyes you have. That's cool, man. Well, all right, our first marine creature of the night, a ghost crab. You guys wanna see how fast this little thing runs? Let's see it. Watch this, put it right down in the sand and it's gonna bolt into the water. Whoa. Whoa. Now, a lot of times in tide pool episodes, we're flipping rocks, but look down at the ground here. It's all sand. It's a lot of sand and the rocks that we do have, like this, are massive and they are not exactly flippable. So, what I do have is this net. We're gonna wade out into the shallow water and see if we can get something inside. You ready? Let's do it. All right. With our lights scanning the shallow waters, we carefully made our way through the maze of rocks. And all of a sudden, we came across our next animal. 
got something over here. What do you got? It's like a slug. Ooh, no, it's a sea cucumber. All right, guys, follow my hand down here right into the water. Oh, yeah. You see it right here? There it is. All right, I'm gonna pick it up really slowly. You ready? Oh, come here, buddy. There we go. Wow, that is a good size sea cucumber. Totally stretched out, I would say this. Whoa, oh! look at it, squirting water. That's not pee, that is excess water from inside of its body. Let me turn it for you like that. Oh, it's like a tremor. Look at that beast. Now, this is the most common sea cucumber species here in Hawaii, and one that I hoped that we would come across. Underwater, you can see that they have all these little bumps. It's what makes them look like a cucumber. And I keep saying sea cucumber, and you're probably thinking, well, is it a vegetable or is it an animal? Mark, do you know? Uh, I don't want to eat it. No, well, I, well, actually, you can eat the sea cucumber. Really? But the sea cucumber is not a vegetable. It is an animal. They're actually in the same phylum as sea urchins and sea stars. Now, let me see. One end is the anus and one end is the mouth. I do believe this is the anus, also known as a butt. I think it just farted, actually. And this is the <laughs> mouth. No, really, I heard a... Really? It, yeah, I, I heard it. it. It farted on me. Now, <laughs> this end here is the mouth, and these creatures are very similar to the terrestrial earthworm in that they're moving along the basin of the ocean, and they're literally eating through one end, and they feed by bringing sand into their body, and then they're absorbing all the algae and all the decomposing plant matter that's on the base of the ocean. And as they're moving along, it's processing through the length of the body, and then being pooped out on this end in these little tiny sand pebbles. And sure enough, here's some right here. And I'm gonna pick it up, okay? That's sand. Nope, this is poop. I'm gonna get a whole handful of it. Why are you touching it? Because I wanna show you guys what sea cucumber poop looks like. Oh man, look at that. It just crumbles in my fingers. Hold on. Uh, let me get a little turn here. Very slowly. That right there. Yep, that is, uh, deposited sea cucumber droppings right there. Ew. It just smells like sand. And basically the sand filters through their body, they absorb their nutrients from the plants that are growing on the sand, and then they continue about their business. Now like I said, this is the most common sea cucumber species here in Hawaii. There are around 50 different species and around 1,200 species worldwide. But the one that I'm really looking for tonight is the white spotted sea cucumber. It's very cool looking. So we're gonna put this guy back into the water and see if we can find one of those white spotted ones. Sound good? Let's do it. All right. Bye, big guy. Thanks for squirting water on me. All right, guys, come here, check this out. What do you got? Our second cucumber species of the night. You see right here? Oh yeah. I'm gonna slowly bring it off the rock. Got a good shot? Yep, much different looking. That is a white spotted. Whoa! There goes the water excretion. Look at it, deflate. Just like a water balloon with a hole in it. And that's the butt right there. And that's the mouth. Now this is the white spotted cucumber, another very common species here in the Hawaiian tide pools. Now what makes this sea cucumber very unique is it actually has five teeth in its butt. What? Why? Why would it be right? Why would it have teeth in its butt? <laughs> are you done? Now these teeth are not used for feeding, they're actually used as a defense. Now there's a parasitic fish out here called a pearl fish that will actually try to swim inside of its butt and then feast off of its organs. Ew. Well, I'm glad it has the teeth then because that wouldn't be very fun. No, things swimming up your butt eat your organs. Not a good day. But let's turn this little white spotted sea cucumber this direction and look at his face. Hi, buddy. Kind of look like an elephant trunk, don't you? Now, I love these ones, and you can clearly see where they get the name, white spotted cucumber. So it has little white spots, little bumpy patches all over its back. Those do help with camouflage in the tide pool. Now, they do get quite a bit bigger than this, but any sea cucumber is a cool cucumber. 
in my book. <laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah, that's a little pun. All right, well, should we put uh, this one back into the water and see what else we can find? Let's do it. All right. These cucumbers are everywhere. Give it to two feet, a second to grip on there. Here you go, buddy. All right, let's keep moving. Watch out for sea urchins. turning into the night of the sea cucumbers. This is not what I was expecting to find. Hold on a second. Can you see this right here? That is a warty sea cucumber. Now, a lot of its warts are gonna disappear when I pick it up. Look at that. That is awesome. Wow! Oh my gosh, I can feel all its little two feet gripping onto my fingers. That is so cool. All right, I'm gonna lift it up a little bit higher very gently. That may be the most bizarre looking marine creature. Oh, it's making a fart noise. Hello. I know, you're right in the middle of dinner, eating all sorts of plant matter. Dead stuff on the bottom of the ocean. I can't even believe what I'm holding right now. You seeing this? That thing is so bizarre looking. Oh. A warty sea cucumber. Just when you thought the big black sea cucumber was bizarre, we find this thing. I think this is the mouth and this is the butt. It's tough to tell on this one. Yeah, but how, do, how do you tell which is which? Well, usually the mouth will actually extend out. I believe this is the mouth and they have these little tentacles that they use. Yeah, this is, this is the head. Here we go, look, maybe he's gonna show us his tentacles. Your tentacles gonna come out? No, guess not. But they use it like a little vacuum cleaner, like to eat up a bunch of sand. They just process it through their bodies. And then what's really cool about all sea cucumbers that I know of is that they actually breathe through their butts. Can you see the butt there? That's a butt, and that's, that's, that's where it breathes? Yep, you see that? You see there's air coming out. That's why I'm hearing that farting noise. Oh my gosh, it is. Right? I thought you were kidding. Nope, breathes through its butt. Crazy gross, but crazy awesome. Oh, there, it's, there you go. It's, it's excreting a little bit of its excess water. You can see the body is deflating now at this point. It's kind of just turning into a gelatinous mass. This thing is crazy awesome. Oh, look at this, look at this. What's happening? That's its mouth. Here it comes, sticking his head out. Hey, buddy. And you can see all these little tentacles up front here. Oh, yeah. They're contracted in, but when he's underwater. Oh, oh it's opening its mouth. It's leaking on me. It's opening its mouth. Something's happening. That's its mouth. That's its mouth right there. You see that? That is crazy. Similar to the sea slugs that we've shown you guys before. And remember, this is not a slug. It's related to sea stars and sea urchins. When they're in the water, they actually take their true form. Watch this. I'm going to set it back down in here, and it's going to go from a blob of jello back into a sea cucumber. Dude, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Look, you can see I've it. Ever you can see seen. the tentacles come out of his face. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at that. You see all his tentacles up front there? Yep. That's yep. its mouth. Look at that. You can see all the tube feet better underwater like that. Actually, if I keep it underwater like this, look at all those tube feet on the underside. Those are all like little itty bitty suction cups that help it to slowly move along the basin of the ocean. Looks like it has a mustache. It does. A big, it looks like a big walrus mustache. Let me touch those. Those are little sensory organs. Now, can it bite you? No, sea cucumbers do not bite. Oh, I can see all its uh, little warts or appendages have come back. Oh yeah. See that? Now it's completely taken the sea cucumber form. Look how long this one is. Look at its body fully stretched out. That is impressive. What an amazing creature. I'm in complete awe of this thing right now. Hold on, I'm just holding on my arm here. There we go. So cool. I love sea cucumbers. They're becoming my new favorite marine creature. Fascinating. And there are around 1,200 species worldwide and 50 in Hawaii alone. How cool is that? Wow. Yeah, you guys have a lot of sea cucumbers here. I mean, we've only been exploring for, what, hour and a half? And we've come across three species already? 
pretty awesome. Well, I would definitely say that our first episode of Beyond the Tide filmed in the dark certainly turned into the Night of the Sea Cucumber. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. All right, buddy. Back off into the ocean with you. Exploring tide pools under the darkness of night was incredibly rewarding. And the animal activity was unlike anything we had encountered before. And while sea cucumbers may not be the fastest moving creature you can come across, I think it's safe to say that what they lack in speed, they definitely make up for with their bizarre appearance. Hey Coyote Pack, have you picked up your tickets for the Brave Adventures Tour yet? There's only a few left, so make sure to click on this link to reserve your seats today. And remember, the tour is the only place you can find one of the exclusive Golden Adventure tickets. And don't forget, subscribe so you can join me and the crew on our next big adventure. I am so proud to have written this book and it was inspired by a lot of the adventures that we have had.